I haven't had a good reason to break out my Switch Lite in a long time. I love it. The form factor is perfect for portable mode and it has a real D-pad. The biggest problem that's keeping me from using it is Nintendo's weird account system, making it kind of a pain to use multiple Switches with one Nintendo account. And also, the OLED Switch has a significantly nicer looking screen. But I might have just gotten a reason to use it more frequently. I have these aluminum Joy-Con shells that I like a lot. They look awesome, even when paired with regular old Joy-Cons. They're like super bougie. It's like having a piece of jewelry on your Switch. and they're priced as such. Well, recently Tito over at the YouTube channel Macho Nacho Productions shed some light on this shell mod for the Switch Lite. If you've been looking to breathe some new life into your Switch Lite or even just change things up a bit or class it up, this mod is for you, as long as you have the patience and the delicate hands for it, because it is a pretty intricate mod. Also, the money because it is an expensive mod. Whoa! This video is sponsored by All Form. I thought you hated that couch. Yeah, this couch sucks. It's like small and it smells. Ow, jeez. Well, you know, if it was like an all form couch, you could just pop in another section and make it longer. All, all what now? All form. You never heard of all form before? Oh yeah, I, I know them. I used to listen to them all the time before everybody else thought they were cool. What? It's a couch company. What are you talking about? Yeah, I knew that. So yeah, tell me about this couch. Well, you've heard me talk about the Helix mattress that I love so much. All Form, their sister company, has couches. Wake up. Okay, I'm listening. All Form lets you personalize your sofa by creating over 500 unique combinations. It's perfect for people with weird room layouts. Or maybe you're just in a small apartment now and looking to upgrade in the future. Your sofa can upgrade with you. Or you just realize you're a bit too long to fit just by the additional parts you need. With the space we have here, I went with the sand colored three seat sofa with a chase, 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 because that's where long people fit best. I was a little worried about getting this whole thing into the apartment, but it came in smaller, easier to manage pieces. And it was super simple to put together. It took just a few minutes and required zero tools. Way easier than some of the other big companies. Jim, Jim, look at me. Custom sofas like this from other places could take a whole two to three months to ship. All Form is much quicker and the shipping is free. All Form also has a 100 day trial. That's a whole three months to make sure that you love it. And if you don't, they'll pick it up for you and give you a full refund. So if you're in the market for a new chair or sofa, just go to allform.com wolf or use the link in the description below for a whole 20% off your brand new chair or sofa. That's a lot off. Did you listen to anything? Okay, I'm listening. I'm getting a feeling that you're not. Oh, wow, that sounds crazy. Okay, say something if you're not listening. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna oh. get one now. I still think I hate doing Joy-Con shell swaps more. This actually wasn't too bad. It was actually way more of a pleasant experience than I expected. I'm not gonna be Doing a full tutorial video here, Macho Nacho has a fantastic screw by screw tutorial that I followed over on his YouTube channel if you wanna check that out. Definitely watch that if you're gonna do this yourself. I'm just gonna jump in with a few extra pieces of advice and also my experiences and opinions. The whole process took me about two hours straight, but I broke it up with a few breaks in between. The kit comes with a sticker, thank you, a screen protector, all the screws you'll need, hand labeled in baggies, a Y screwdriver, a Phillips screwdriver, and a tweezer! Oh, I, yeah, oh, I lost mine. I lost my, my, my tweezers. You gave me tweezers. Great. There's a couple more things you'll need though. You'll need some sort of spudger to pry apart some of the plastic. I used a Lego separator, which worked fantastic. You will also need some thermal paste. You might be able to do without it, but I wouldn't risk it. 
you will need to remove the heat sink to get to the screws underneath. I tried to do it without removing the heat sink and failed miserably. So I decided to come back the next day with thermal paste in hand. Since you've got to remove the heat sink, it's probably wise to just clean and reapply the thermal paste. I also had thermal paste wipes, but you can just use isopropyl alcohol and a Q-tip. You will also need something that will heat this thing up to soften the adhesive that holds the screen to the front of the case. Now you can use one of these fancy iFixit thingies, or you could just use a hairdryer. Macho Nacho called this the hardest part of the whole thing. And honestly, I thought it would be too. I think my hairdryer just hit it right. It kind of just slid right off with a few gentle twists. It was super easy. And also the Lego separator worked wonders. There are screws of various sizes included and it's important to watch Macho Nacho's reassembly so you know which screw goes where. He does say there is one screw you'll need to save for later, but there's also the screws around the fan that you'll need to hold onto. And I think there's even one other screw. Just don't throw any of these screws out while you're taking it apart. Make sure you save everything and watch his whole tutorial all the way to the end. Then you can throw everything out. There are a lot of ribbon cables on this thing that you have to detach. Ribbon cables are super fragile. I'd suggest avoiding using the tweezers for these as much as you can, because they're pretty sharp, but sometimes it's unavoidable. I almost used this for the battery, you know. Uh, I, I learned from a friend that that's not a very good idea to do. Again, following the step-by-step -step guide was super helpful. Do you know how hard it is to take something this intricate apart and also film yourself doing it, the whole process start to finish? This guy got macro shots of each individual screw. That's crazy. Whenever I watch a tutorial like this, it always seems like the person who's doing it has probably taken that same device apart before and put it together already because everything seems a little looser and more you know, worn in than on your device that you're currently taking apart. So I'm here to tell you, don't worry. It's gonna be harder to pry these things apart than it looks. It, everything's dirtier than it appears in the video. So if you struggle with a specific ribbon cable or you struggle to pry some of the plastic apart, it's totally fine. There are no jump cuts in real life. Also, just because I know I'm gonna get a lot of questions about this because it's shown throughout the video, I just recently got this Hoto hand drill thing. I saw it in an Instagram ad, believe it or not. I never buy things on Instagram ads. I saw it in an Instagram ad and then I bought it on Amazon. So I'll leave an affiliate link to that in the description below. Makes me feel like a dentist. It kind of made this a breeze. It works best if you find the screw hole, twist a little bit, then start the motor. It has just enough torque that it'll stop itself from busting your intricate electronics and it'll stop itself from stripping any screws. Although it did break this one piece of plastic, but it still works, everything's fine, everything fit together just fine. The hardest part about this whole thing was actually snapping it together. It's machined aluminum, so it doesn't have the sort of give that plastic has. The cut of this needs to be precise down to a fraction of a millimeter. Because of that, there's some noticeable separation on the edges if you look hard enough. It's misaligned a little bit. This little 3D printed part right here is to allow the Wi-Fi antenna to breathe. But mine was a little messed up. It had a glob of extra filament on one side. So the case wasn't closing right. Nothing my trusty filing kit can't fix though. Even after all that though, it's still kind of pushing out a little bit. I must not have filed it down all the way and I can just take it out. Oh, the adhesive came off. Oh, I wasn't supposed to file that part down. Well, fuck. Also, the L and R bumpers are a real tight fit, just like he says in his video. So tight though, that it kind of loses its click. It still presses, but it's not as clicky as it once was. Otherwise, all the other buttons and thumbsticks work perfectly fine. It would have been cool though to see some machined aluminum buttons and maybe even a D-pad like we have on the boxy Pixel Joy-Con. This build reuses some parts from the original Switch Lite case. That's why you see a lot of turquoise still sticking out. The gray Switch Lite looks real nice with this build, but I wasn't about to go out and buy a Switch Lite just for this. 
I'm actually kind of surprised at how well the turquoise turned out. It fits the aesthetic that I've got going on here. Overall, I think the quality is good, and I think the look is fantastic. I think it gives off that premium feel that you'd want from a premium product like this. It makes the Nintendo Switch look more serious for serious adult gamers to play their Marios and their Pokemons. But like, I kind of get why there's no logo on the back, legal reasons, but it would have been nice to have something there. Maybe I'll end up putting like a white vinyl decal of the Nintendo Switch logo there or something. I also think it comes just shy of the quality of products from manufacturers of similar products, like BoxyPixel. I didn't have the same sort of gaps or precision issues from any of their Joy-Con shells. And those are pretty intricate builds too. Okay, well, one of my buttons kind of sticks sometimes, but like, that's it. The finish also has like a little bit of grain to it. You can't feel it and you can only see it if the light hits it a certain way. But the boxy pixel ones don't have that at all. Also, it has a gap in the top of the case for the Wi-Fi antenna and a gap at the bottom of the case for the Bluetooth antenna. Otherwise, the aluminum shell would interfere too much with the signal. I didn't really have a problem with this. I was downloading games just fine, but I did notice my signal was one bar lower on the aluminum switch light than it was on both an OLED Nintendo Switch and another Switch Lite. This didn't cause any performance issues. Games were downloading just as fast as they normally would anyway. And the signal might not have even been that much lower. It might have just caught me on the threshold between bar two and three. But this does prove that the case does have an effect on signal strength, however small that effect might be. If you're already having issues with signal strength in your house or your apartment or wherever you play your Nintendo Switch the most, I don't think I would be able to recommend this mod to you. If you get full bars or even just two bars in some areas of your house or apartment, I think you'd be just fine with this. Now, I like this and I'm fortunate and grateful that Macho Nacho was willing to send me one for this. But $200 is a big ask for something like this. I don't think I would have had the gall to purchase this for myself otherwise. But the price does kind of make sense. It's machined out of one solid piece of aluminum, just like a MacBook would be. And these boxy pixel Joy-Con are $100 for the pair, a little more than $100 for the pair. And these are just Joy-Cons. This is an entire Nintendo Switch, light. It's also a bit more intricate on the inside with the PCB standoffs and stuff. The price makes sense, and I'm not here to criticize that, but obviously it's gonna be hard to justify for most people. You're spending an entire Switch Lite's worth of money for just a shell, but I think the people who would be interested in a premium mod like this probably know what they're getting themselves into. This is for the Rockefeller nerd who wants to impress their Animal Crossing playing girlfriend for their birthday or something. I mean, if you made it this far in the video, you probably know who you are. If you do want to purchase this for yourself or somebody else, they will become available next Friday, March 18th over on Macho Nacho store. Just follow him and I'm sure he will update you on Twitter or his YouTube channel or something like that. Anyway, what do you guys think about having a solid metal Nintendo Switch or solid metal Joy-Cons? Do you want a solid metal everything right now? Do you think it's just too much money? Do you think it's just too much work? Or do you think it's perfectly reasonable and gives you a nice little piece of jewelry to go along with your Nintendo Switch? Leave it in the comments below. Add me on Twitter and any and all this other social media garbage. Thank you all for sponsoring this video. If you're in the market for a new couch or chair, don't forget to check them out. They were the only sponsor. I talked about a lot of things, but they were the only ones who sponsored. Macho Nacho just gave me the shell, but I, I thank him for that. Did you know there's also Twitch streams over on twitch.tv slash wolfden and a good way to help support this channel. If you have Amazon Prime and you like watching these videos, you can go over to Twitch and you can support us for free. It gives us like, what, $3 a month? You get a free Twitch Prime subscription and you don't even use it. Costs you nothing, gives me $3. But of course, the most important thing that you can do is just subscribe right here and turn on notifications if you'd like to know when every single one of these videos goes up and share this video with a friend. A friend who's maybe interested in modding stuff like this, maybe you can get them to do it for you. Thank you guys very much. Have yourself a very good week.